Hey, Ray from LoveYRV.com once again. I've been just uh, relaxing this afternoon here on Vancouver Island in our uh, really nice campsite, but I've been uh, getting annoyed by the the refrigerator fan. We have a Dometic refrigerator in our Cougar, and uh, it has a really noisy cooling fan sitting in the cooling stack. It tends to, once it gets hot out, turns on and off quickly. It just usually cycles every 30 or 40 seconds. It can be quite annoying. So I think it's uh, time to take things apart in the refrigerator and see what I can do to solve that. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've been having this uh, issue with my uh, Dometic fridge. A small fan cycling over and over and over and over. You can see it there on the coil. I'm shooting straight up into the fridge and you can see just above it is a looks like a thermostat so it, and it's attached to one of the fridge coils so my uh, theory is that that thermostat is turning the fan on. Well, it's so close to the fan um, airflow that the fan is actually cooling the thermostat and then the thermostat um, turns off. So the fan's not staying on long enough to properly cool the coils. So I'm going to pull the fridge and try to relocate that um, thermostat. And I also might uh, decide to change that fan for a quieter model. Also looks like it needs to be cleaned. There we go. Fridge all pulled out. It's a very easy job. Like I say, there's just a handful of screws. Undo your gas and your electric and uh, you're good to go. The main thing that I found handy is having something just the right size to slide it out on. and just happens one of the toolboxes in my truck's just the right height. So it makes it super easy to slide it out onto that. Then I can move it around the rig. So here's the noisy fan right here all the noise and you can see the problem they have the thermostat that turns on and off the fan right above it so it looks like it's just a clip-on so it could actually be moved to a different location that would probably stop the short cycling but I'm gonna change that fan out for a, a little better quality fan that's designed for computers a case fan a little larger and it runs a lot quieter so I'm going to mount it using the same holes there and I'm probably going to move this thermostat to a different location I was looking on my uh, gun here just kind of taking temperature readings to find out where the hotter part is right up around here you can see it's up in the 90s so I think what I'm going to do is move that that thermal switch up there away from the fan air and it'll turn on a little quicker start the cooling process a little faster than what it is now and probably stop the short cycling so it should be quite the improvement um, also while I have it out here I'm going to clean out all the it's kind of started to collect some dust I'll vacuum brush that all off and I've been wanting to change this uh, drain hose that's uh, you know the water comes off inside the fridge when it melts and it it comes out and through this tube it's just to drain but the plastic is getting really brittle starting to crack stuff like that so I've picked up a, a different hose I'm going to change that out while I have everything apart so let's get to work get the new fan in here oh one thing oh, maybe I should show you in here for Keystone Cougar owners. This is a Keystone uh, fifth wheel trailer. 
2011 model 276 RLS. Uh, probably a lot of them are the same, but if you ever want to get all your, add all your wiring, you can see they uh, they run most of the wire bundles up the fridge shaft here. I'll just look up there. Just check out all the wiring. So if you're ever looking for a wire or a place to run wires, this seems to be where they do it. And also, this is the um, for the vent for the the sink. Sink vent comes up and goes out and gets vented up in the same spot as the the fridge. Okay, here's the stock fan. You can see it's pretty noisy. And uh, now I'll show you the replacement fan I'm putting in. There we go. You can barely hear it. It actually is spinning quite fast, but it's doing something with, strange with the camera. It must also be at just the right frequency to make it look like it's slowing down. Anyway, it's pretty well dead quiet. So there we go. I've mounted uh, the new fan. I've also moved the thermostat over here so the fan's not blowing right on the thermostat. It's also in uh, one of the hottest parts of the pipe so it'll turn on the fan the earliest. And for mounting, I used the same holes they had used, and I used some, uh, just some pipe hanger material, doubled it up. So it's got a little bit of flex, but not too much. The fan doesn't have much torque. And then I used the bottom of the pipes and wrapped them up so I could uh, have a place to run my wires. And then, of course, you see I've kind of gooped it with silicone. Gooped the nuts and bolts with silicone. Once that dries up, it'll give it even more support. And also then the, the nuts won't back off and fall off, fall out because, you know, we have a lot of, quite a bit of vibration when we're traveling around. Okay, and I've also uh, given everything a good vacuum. The top vents, made sure they're all clean. You don't want those to be plugged because that's for the cooling up there. And I thought I'd show you some stuff down here. I've taken this cover off and that's, that exposes the control board. Um, I've seen it's called a dinosaur board a lot of places online. So I've just gone in there and checked all my connections for corrosion. Everything looks really good uh, on the board. No signs of overheating or corrosion or anything. I also pulled my uh, the covers off my flue and my burner and had a look at that. I won't go too much into detail how to, to do that. You can look in the service manual for that, but every once in a while you want to clean your uh, flu. There's a brush you can get. Clean any uh, debris that collects in there. And uh, pull out the the burner, and they say to, to soak it in uh, mineral spirits or some type of uh, camping fuel or something, just to clean it all up, make sure it burns nice and clean. So, next thing I'm going to do is change out this uh, drain line before it starts to get really bad and crack. So they just had it, uh, they had some goop holding it there and had a zip clip. And you can see, I'll just pull that off. It's just basically plastic there, so. And they run it down through there. So I'm going to follow the same path the factory did. But I'm going to swap it out. I couldn't find any of this plastic. I'm going to swap it out for this clear plastic I picked up at a hardware store. I think it should be okay. I'm sure it'll last as, as long as this junk lasted. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll zip clip it in place and uh, put some uh, silicone around it to keep it there. Uh, new drain hose in place. Everything else sewed up. So just before... I connect up the fan. I'm actually going to solder the wires together just to make sure I have a good connection. I just wanted to let you hear the fan. Okay, so we'll get really close. You just barely hear it going. Whisper quiet. 
So that's going to be much more pleasing when I sit outside and I don't have to hear that annoying over and over and over. Now this thing will probably come on and it'll likely just run nicely until the, the thing gets the sufficient cooling. One caveat though is the original fan in here I think was about somewhere between 50 and 60 cubic feet a minute whereas this one's around 40 so I'm giving up a bit of uh, airflow because of this quiet fan. Um, I don't really camp too much in very hot places. I'm up north in the in the summer and down south in the winter and it never gets very hot for very long. So I think this should give me enough airflow. If you're going to mod this, I would advise if you're you know camping where it's going to be 100 degrees out, 100, over 100 degrees, you might want to go with a pair of these fans. I've seen cooling kits online, you can get as much as three fans in there. So uh, I'll leave that up to you, what you want to decide, but I'm just going to go with with this fan as I'm I'd like the how quiet it is. I think it'll give me enough airflow. I don't have my refrigerator in a slide like some folks do, so I have a nice uh, tall stack up to the roof top. So I get quite a bit of a convection, and I think this will just give me that extra boost on a on a warm day. I'll just have to play it by ear and see if I have to add an extra fan beyond that. Okay, all soldered in place. Just use a little electrical tape there to tape it up to the side. Do some lead dress on the wiring. Looking good. Okay, so now I'll uh, wrangle that sucker back in place. Use my He-Man strength. Get her in there. If that doesn't work, I'll have to call my wife. There we go. Okay, since I didn't show you the screw positions when I took it apart, maybe I'll show you now as it goes together. There's not too many. Um, there's two at the bottom. If you open the door, right on this corner and down on that corner, you'll find two screws on the fridge door. And then up here, you're going to want to look for uh, screw up in the corner there. Where was that one? Yeah, there's a screw that goes right there. And then you'll, you might find uh, some of this foil tape over a hidden screw there. And over here we got another foil tape with a hidden screw and there was a screw in the corner. So basically six screws. And this thing, the, the bez, basil, bezel trim up here just unclips. You just got to be careful to kind of pull out, pull on it. There's no screws holding it in place, just a, a plastic uh, clip doing the deed. So, pretty straightforward getting that out, but I thought I'd show you just in case you're looking to do it. Like I say, this is a, a Dometic DM2652. I'm not sure if the 2852 is the same, but there you go. And as far as the outside goes, there's one screw that goes into the corner over here and one screw that goes into the other corner over there and that holds the fridge in place. Of course you've got your power cord that plugs into this uh, outlet there and then there's the 12 volts that uh, goes into this uh, connector here as a screw. You just screw them in. Um, I just made sure to mark mine so I know which is which. Uh, so this one I put a black bit of black a marker on it and black tape so I know black to black and the other one white to white so I don't get uh, my 12 volts reversed and then you've got your uh, over here you've got your gas line to hook up I'll do that in a second so when uh, loosening and tightening the gas line I use two wrenches like that so that I don't end up twisting on the gas line and risk cracking it or anything like that. Because uh, if you just use one wrench then you can get a lot of torque on the gas line. You might end up bending it or breaking it or something like that. So it's good to use two. There's one on the other one. Um, another one on the flat part here. And then once you've got it all set up again and you turn on the gas you want to get some of that uh, 
liquid gas check. Um, you can use dishwashing soap. You can buy special stuff. They just spray on and then look for bubbles. Make sure you got no leaks in your in your gas line there. But uh, it's a pretty solid connection. It's a flared gas line, so it's uh, pretty uh, secure. Okay, just do a quick check of the burner. Unplug the power here, and the gas should automatically come on and light. Okay, it doesn't look like too bad of a flame. Nice and blue. Clean. There we go. No more annoying fridge fan. The new fan seems to be turning on fine, and I can't hear it at all outside. Now I can enjoy the peace and quiet when I'm relaxing without hearing that fridge fan going on and off. If you've come across this video and you have a, a problem with your Dometic fridge where the it's not working on electric then uh, check out my other video where I uh, replaced the heating, a faulty heating element. I'll link to it in the description. Until next time, this is Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Hope you're having a good uh, RVing summer. Cheers.